Maui, Hawaii. Greetings from the Pacific Ocean, guys. This is the Indian Ocean behind me, and I am in Mauritius. The Atlantic Ocean behind me, Reykjavik, Iceland. Hello and welcome at It's Never Too Far Away. This video is the third leg of my current trip that I'm doing, covering the three oceans of the world, Hawaii in the Pacific Ocean, Mauritius in the Indian Ocean, and finally Iceland in the Atlantic Ocean. Currently I'm still in Mauritius and I'm going to explore some of the places here on the way to the airport, but later this afternoon I'm leaving here, heading to Iceland. My routing from Mauritius to Iceland was on Emirates via Dubai to London Heathrow and connecting there on Iceland Air. It was an afternoon departure in Mauritius and an afternoon arrival in Iceland the following day. I just stepped outside five seconds ago. First time I'm breathing Icelandic air. It's of course a lot colder than in Hawaii and in Mauritius. I'm, I'm standing outside of the airport terminal now in Keflavik, the international airport in Iceland, and I have to connect from the domestic airport of Reykjavik, the capital city. And I thought it should be possible to get there as there will be several people who transfer like this but uh, online I couldn't find a direct link I could only find buses that go to the city and I asked the stewardess on the flight and she said yeah I have to take a bus to the city and from there from the bus depot I can go to that other airport now here I asked for a bus um, and they said it just left and the next one is in one hour and anyway the one that just left was full one hour uh, so I will take a taxi now to be sure I will get to that other hub finding a taxi was easy and also English is very fluently spoken so there was no struggle apart from the fact that there is no direct other connection between the international and the domestic airports between the international airport Keflavik and the capital city of Reykjavik, it is a 40-minute taxi ride on the open highway. The cost of that transfer came at 140 US dollars. Before in Hawaii and in Mauritius, I had allowed one day for my stays. Also here in Iceland, I had one full day before flying home finally early in the following morning. For my stay here, I had come up with the idea to include a domestic flight and spend the first night in the northern Icelandic town of Akureyri. Iceland, of course, is all about nature and this taxi ride gave me an idea of the uninhabited secludedness here. The domestic airport served three local routes at this time with only a couple of daily departures in total. The airline here is also Iceland Air with Dash 8 turboprops operated by its regional affiliate until recently Air Iceland Connect. By the time my flight departed it had gotten dark. Apart from my love for flying around the world in jumbo jets, I must say that sitting on shorter regional flights in remote corners of the world, like this one, has a very, very strong appeal on its own. And likewise, connecting through the mega hubs 
is one thing I always love. But arriving at a small remote airport like here in Akureyri is also totally amazing and cool. It was only a few steps from the plane into the terminal and it was also only a few minutes by the single taxi waiting outside to get into town. Between Mauritius and Akureyri it was not the longest journey of this entire trip, but it was long enough that it felt good to sit down in a real restaurant and to enjoy a real meal. In this case, fish soup and seafood pasta. The travels of the past seven days had made me more than just a little tired, yet I did not sleep as much as I had planned. And for a very good reason, you will find out why. Anyway, in the next morning it was time to explore town and get a feeling of how beautiful the setting here was. In just a couple of hours I had my flight back to Reykjavik. The clean air and the colors of the sky right after sunrise were really stunning. This was before breakfast and this after. I don't even know what I enjoyed more, the mountains in the background or that Nordic sky. Not only the mountains in the background and the sky above I found beautiful, but also in town itself the neat decoration with lights, some of the buildings and even winterproof flower beds in the street were really nice. And even though this town might not be just one flight away from your town, it is full of visitors and also has lots of facilities, hotels, guest houses, hostels for any kind of traveler. This town is a center for whale watching. And today is November 21st and this time of the year this place is a very popular spot for northern light watching. Actually, last night in the, at the bar, in the restaurant where I was sitting, there was an Aurora hunter with his laptop on, watching latest data. And he told me, especially last night, there was very high activity in the atmosphere, giving a very high probability of Aurora to happen. I actually tried my luck as well last night. Around midnight I was outside for around 45 minutes, but I did not have luck. 
So, that is why I did not allow myself all the planned sleep. I stayed awake and watching out between 11 p.m. and 1.30 in the morning, staying even outside in the cold on a hill in town for 45 minutes. But it would have been too easy. I have met people who traveled to Iceland more than once just to catch a glimpse of the spectacular northern light or aurora as it is also known. But trust me, simply looking out and waiting to see whether it will actually appear or not was totally wonderful and special. On this entire trip I'm taking 18 flights and of course I wanted to travel with carry-on baggage only. Going to Hawaii and to Mauritius is simple because these are warm countries but when your itinerary also includes Iceland you certainly have to bring more warm clothing. So I tried to be as lean as possible on my baggage of course but I included two sweaters and now is the time that I actually need to wear them. And I'm lucky because it's above freezing here and not below. It could be much colder at this time. Very fast it was noon and time to head back to the airport. The sun barely made it above the hills. This time it was a daylight flight, again on the very same Dash 8. I will let you enjoy the spectacular view. The flight was actually delayed by around two hours, so by the time I arrived, the sun was already close to setting, which made a beautiful sky. I had actually planned to rent a car and spend the afternoon getting a little closer to a nearby volcano, but the flight delay had taken away too much of the remaining daylight hours. Thank you. 
Therefore, I decided to simply take an hour or two in Reykjavik itself before heading to Keflavik, where I had reserved a room at the airport hotel. The cost of the car was similar to that of the taxi ride back to the airport anyway. Again, I didn't know what to enjoy more, the city setting or the beautiful Nordic sky above. Once it was dark in the early evening, I made my way from Reykjavik to Keflavik. Once outside the city, there was no other village and I realized that I had probably never been in such full and complete darkness. I was happy that there was street light all along the way. At one point I stopped for a minute or two to get out of the car and take a look into that black darkness. Finally, the lights of Keflavik appeared in front of me. The weather in the meantime had become pretty nasty. Therefore it was especially nice to be in the hotel's restaurant and enjoy another fish soup and fish. Again not too much sleep as I had to catch once more a very early morning departure. It was an Iceland Air Boeing 737 MAX 9 to London Heathrow. From there it was onwards to Germany and the trip came to a very unspectacular end. It's never too far away. Thank you for watching.